Hi guys, it's Rob from Royal Balls. Uh, many of you will have watched the uh, last video that I did um, with David Suarez from David Suarez Reptiles in Indonesia visiting ARP Constrictors. I'm wearing David's t-shirt. So uh, big shout out to him. Stay tuned for the follow-on video uh, because we will try to uh, organize a visit to uh, Jakarta Arwin and myself will uh, visit David Suarez across in Indonesia and bring you another video from his facility. Hopefully we can make that happen. Okay guys, many of the viewers have asked me to uh, cover um, the female aspect of breeding. Um, I've covered males in a number of videos and also some collabs with Predator BP um, over in the UK. Um, but um, what I'm going to do for you guys is to uh, walk you through my breeding season and what to look for in, in your females in particular. Now, please remember that I am living and working in the tropics. There are no heat mats in any of my tubs and I use the natural monsoon cycles uh, in order to breed my snakes. I'm still in the northern hemisphere, just. Um, which means that uh, my breeding season will be approximately familiar and the timing of uh, the various stages of breeding will still be familiar to many of you guys who keep snakes uh, in temperate regions in the UK and the US. Uh, our seasons are approximately the same. This will be a two-part series. Uh, the first part will walk you through the uh, early stages of the season, which will be the rainy season. And you will see that despite the fact that I don't have heat mats, the uh, temperatures during the rainy season are very conducive to uh, encouraging these snakes to breed. There is a slight temperature drop down to about 28 degrees centigrade and it rains a lot. So it's very, very humid. Um, and I, I think you guys will, uh, will know that um, even if you don't drop your temperatures or your ambient temperatures in your snake room, uh, you do mist down your snakes when you pair them up. Um, the natural monsoon cycles do all of that for me. So there is a natural cooling period here. Um, it doesn't get so cold that the females can't digest. Temperatures are still optimal for these snakes. Um, so some of the behaviours that we'll, you will see are related to um, various phases in follicle development and I'll tell you what I observe in my snakes. Um, the same behaviours will be exhibited by your snakes but the behaviours may be expressed in a slightly different way because you're using heat mats and I'm not. Uh, so we're going to walk through the, um, the first visual stages. So it commences in November for me. That's when I start pairing my snakes. That's when the uh, temperature changes noticeably and we move into the wet season. So it is a visual cue. I do not have ultrasound. I'm very low tech here. Um, so when I talk about follicle development, um, it's a purely visual thing. As the females grow follicles, uh, they get up to about 25 millimeter follicles and they go off food. The reason that they do that as they grow follicles is that the follicles actually obstruct the, uh, the digestive system. Uh, there's no room in there for food anymore. So uh, females will go off food at around about 25 millimeter follicles. So I don't know that the females have 25 millimeter follicles. I do know that they go off food. Um, so that's a visual cue for me uh, that the snakes are on track and they're round about 25 millimeter follicles. Um, so let's take a look at some of the snakes, some of the behaviours that you can expect during this period. Remember that your pre-season preparation is just as important as what you do during the actual breeding season and during the pairings. Uh, we'll cover all of that, but your season actually starts and your preparation for these females to breed starts when you lift them off eggs from the previous season. You must get your females back into condition, they must regain that lost weight and they must be in, in uh, good prime condition in order to breed them again the following year. And we'll look at some snakes that uh, have done that for me and that I'm breeding again this year even though they bred last year. And we'll look at some snakes that haven't and what are the visual cues that I look for uh, in order to tell me that a snake is ready to breed or it's not ready to breed or I need to hold off a little while. It will still breed but it needs a 
little bit more time to put more weight on. So we'll run through all of that uh, and I'll show you my snakes. Remember that the visual cues that I'm looking for may be slightly different depending upon your environmental conditions. This is just what I see and what I observe. So just pulling out some tubs at random, some of my uh, breeder females, this is a normal girl and uh, she has uh, been locked up to a, uh, a scorch male which is a super pastel leopard mojave to try to get some uh, pastel leopard and pastel mojave combos uh, but you can see that she, whilst she isn't a particularly long snake you can see what superb condition she has huge girth on her here. She has built up some uh, fantastic fat reserves uh, eating ravenously. She is going through that stage now where uh, she's eating ferociously, building follicles obviously. She has been cooling and bowl wrapping at times uh, although I don't have a temperature gradient in the tub so it's very difficult to see snakes moving backwards and forwards in the tub for temperature control they do tend to uh, gravitate towards the water bowl and will often wrap the water bowl and drag it towards the back of the tub where they feel more comfortable they, uh, they curl up at the back of the tub so this is a classic example of a female which is in superb condition um, is being bred this year and uh, probably is going to, uh, to go. She's built up a uh, tremendous girth here as she builds follicles uh, but she's still eating, she's still eating ferociously actually and I'm giving her a little bit extra while she's eating ferociously I'll, uh, I'll I gave her an extra rat at the weekend so she actually took two um, I'll sometimes feed twice a week uh, smaller meals or sometimes give them an extra rat if they're uh, at the front of the tub looking for more after they've eaten uh, one rat. Uh, give your females as much as they want to eat at this time of year. Get them building those fat reserves because when she goes off food uh, she'll be fasting for a hundred days and uh, it's a big drain on their resources but having a nice chunky fat female like this one um, I've got um, uh, no no doubt that she can uh, be a good clutch of eggs this year. So that's what I'm looking for in my females at this time of year. Um, when they're eating ravenously, they're bull wrapping, they're still building follicles, so she's not reached 25 millimeter follicles yet. She's still eating, uh, but you can see she is building up some good reserves and she's locking up willingly with the male every time we put the male in. Here is another female who is at exactly the same stage as the uh, normal that we just looked at. This is my pied girl and you can see that she has built up some, uh, let's just get a look at her here. You see the tremendous girth that she's built up here. Um, she is building follicles, uh, she's building up her fat reserves. She is now mating willingly with the, uh, the male. Uh, this is a female that is now uh, close to three years old but uh, this is her first season she didn't go for me last year so I'm making sure that I feed her uh, extremely well this year and you can see the uh, the thickness the girth and the uh, fat reserves that she's built up so this is what I'm looking for in my females at this time of year again she's bowl wrapping she's eating ravenously she is going through that uh, ravenous stage um, so again she's building follicles uh, but hasn't yet reached that 25 millimeter stage where around about 25 millimeters they go off food and then they'll be fasting for a hundred days or more so uh, again this girl I have no doubt about her condition her fat reserves I think she's going to go for me this year contrast that with this girl um, she didn't breed for me last year um, she's not in bad condition she has been eating reasonably although not consistently enough for my liking. She has built some decent girth. Uh, she's a smaller snake overall. Uh, again three years old. This will be her first season breeding. Uh, so I am trying with this female. I am pairing her up. I think she's got enough fat reserves to give me a clutch of eggs although I'm watching her carefully now to uh, uh, monitor her behavior. She has been doing a bit of bowl wrapping um, but as I said she's not going through that um, 
uh, ravenous phase of eating at the moment. She is pairing willingly with the male, uh, but this is one to watch. I need to get more food into her if I can before she goes off food, um, since she's slightly smaller. So this is a female that is a little on the thin side for breeding, but I think will still go. And uh, you can see the difference in the, the girth of the animals here. Um, so this is one to, uh, to watch. This is one to try to get more food into her before she goes off food. This is my uh, leopard ivory female, who again is going through exactly the same phase as the bigger snakes. You can see that she is building some nice girth here. She's at the front of the tub, close to the water bowl. She has been bowl wrapping. We have no heat mats here in the tropics, so it's very difficult to see them migrating to the cooler end of the tub because there isn't one. Uh, but they do tend to bowl wrap to cool off just a little bit. And I am cooling the room with air conditioning down to about 28 degrees centigrade from the normal 30 degrees centigrade. So conditions in here are still warm enough for them to be able to digest um, quite readily. Uh, they won't have any problems digesting, uh, but it's slightly cooler for them to encourage follicle growth. And again, she has started to lock with the male that I'm putting her to. Uh, this is a leopard ivory or leopard super yellow belly. And we're pairing her to a pied male to produce some uh, yellow belly pet for pieds. Uh, there is the possibility that she is a uh, het for pied. Somewhere in her ancestry uh, there is pied, so it wouldn't surprise me if pied pops out of this pairing, but for now we're concentrating on producing hets. Uh, so this is another female that's behaving exactly as she should at this time of year. Um, she's cooling, growing follicles, eating well, and she's putting on some, uh, some nice girth. She is in her uh, third year now. Um, so no problems with this girl and she will probably give me a clutch of eggs this year you can see the thickness there, the nice girth uh, she's got some lovely body condition which she's going to need later when she goes off food this is another female, this is a possible double het albino clown female um, this one is eating like an absolute monster. You can see she's got her head stuck in the water bowl. She was curled around it earlier. She is cooling. And if I just remove the hide, which is a little bit small for her, you can see that she is also getting some tremendous body condition, particularly down in the lower third of her body down here, uh, which is what we're looking for. We're looking for a nice thick, you can see the tail there, a nice thickness all the way down to the tail. She's building up her uh, fat reserves, she's eating really well, she's pairing to the male every single time he goes in, she's cooling using the water bowl uh, as opposed to moving off the hot spot because there isn't one, uh, but you can see she's developing tremendous body condition and she actually looks really nice, she's, uh, she's starting to, uh, to glow and get this really nice uh, bright colour. Um, during the course of their follicle development, females do undergo hormonal changes and you will notice at some stage that uh, she starts to glow. It's a little bit early yet, normally they, uh, they glow before they go and they've already gone off food. Um, so this girl's not quite at that stage yet but she's looking fantastic. Uh, this is another prime example of what a uh, female that's ready to breed will look like and she's behaving exactly how I expect her to behave at this time of year, uh, cool seeking, uh, wrapping the water bowl and eating ravenously as she builds those follicles. Again, we're at the stage where she's not reached 25 millimeters yet. I don't have ultrasound, so I can't ultrasound, but I can gauge roughly just from the look of the snake and from her behavior and what stage she's at. So uh, not at 25 millimeters yet, but um, definitely building. So just at random, uh, looking at another, another double het project. Uh, this female is looking for food, even though she was fed only a few days ago. You can tell she's raring to go and wants to eat some more. Uh, so I may feed her midweek. This girl has not been bred, although she is ready. I do not have a male to put to her. She's a double het, possible double het, um, exanthic clown. And you can see that she's building again. She's building that tremendous body girth he's going to need and I have no doubt that um, if I had a male that was ready for her uh, she would pair up readily with that male. She's bowl hugging a lot now, she's cooling, building follicles even though she hasn't been paired. Um, so that's another 
A uh, thing to watch for guys, your female snakes do not need to be paired with a male in order to grow follicles. Um, she's in a room of other snakes which are breeding, so there's plenty of pheromones floating around in the room. She can smell other snakes, uh, other females which are uh, in the process of building, and she can smell the males in the same room as well. So she's building follicles even though she has not been introduced to a male. And again, she's behaving in exactly this, the way that I would have expected her to behave at this time of year. She hasn't reached 25 millimeter follicles yet, but she is cooling. And she's wrapping the water bowl and she's eating ravenously, a lot more ravenously than she normally would. Although my snakes generally have a, a very good appetite. Um, so this is a first time female as well. She's about two and a half years old and um, she would be ready to go if I had a male to put to her. Now, this female, by contrast, um, I tried to be breed her last year and she put on some tremendous size. Um, she reabsorbed and did not uh, go for me. Um, she was in a bigger tub and went off food completely for a while, which was my fault. Um, I had to put her back into this smaller tub in order to get her to start eating again. And I did put substrate in just to uh, encourage her to start feeding. So you will see that she is actually a big snake in terms of uh, body length she's she's ha actually huge but you can see that in comparison to her length she does not have the girth and the fat reserves particularly down at the tail end you'll see that her tail is actually quite skinny uh, so this is a female that um, is of breeding age uh, I do want to breed her um, but she's just not got enough body condition so I'll hold off with this girl and see whether we can fatten her up during the season it's not too late um, she can still fatten up three or four decent sized rats and she will fatten up um, she is just beginning to bowl wrap so I am seeing some signs now of her actually um, becoming more interested in food and um, starting to cool and build follicles but you can see that compared to the females that we've looked at um, she is a little bit skinny um, she needs to fatten up if we want to breed her this year so we need to get some more food into her she's not carrying the girth or body condition so this is a female that um, really isn't ready to be paired um, I have tried pairing her and she's very reluctant to lock with the male and the, the simple reason is that she's just not ready um, sometimes introducing a male can stimulate the female into a period of uh, very heavy eating um, if she knows there's males around uh, but she already knows there's males around because she can smell them in the room she's in the same room with all the other ball pythons that I have um, so we've just got to monitor this girl um, she is very reluctant to lock with a male and she needs to put on some better body condition before I, um, I will try to pair her up again so this girl needs a little more time she may or may not go this season um, like I said she is starting to exhibit some of the behaviors that I expect um, but this is a girl I think you can see the difference between this one and the other snakes that we've looked at today uh, this one is going to be a bit reluctant to go this year I think this is my pastel vanilla clown girl she laid eggs for me in July this year um, July August September her babies hatched and you can see that um, she's already fully regained her condition uh, she's eating like a dinosaur at the moment you can see how thick she is particularly in this section of her body here okay so this girl is being paired uh, even though she did uh, lay eggs for me in July she's regained her condition and I have no qualms about uh, breeding her again this year she's nice and thick she's eating really well she's got some bo good body reserves and um, she's regained all the weight and more she's ball hugging and she's locking up very regu regularly with the uh, fire clown male that I've introduced to her I do not expect she's going to lay eggs until July again this year um, so we'll keep pairing and uh, we'll monitor her condition but um, she's going to be eating ravenously for the next few months she's not going to be one of these girls that lays early in the season she's probably going to lay around the same time for me as she did last year so looking for eggs in about July time she's clearly already starting to uh, to build and prepare for uh, next year but this is about six months away at least from uh, laying eggs so we'll continue to pair every three weeks we'll continue to feed her as long as she's eating ravenously and we'll monitor her condition but this is another girl 
that uh, is going to go this year. Now this is one of my uh, larger tubs guys and uh, this girl is in shed. Um, she laid for me also uh, May last year. I put her in this big tub and she's needed substrate and a hide in order to, uh, to get her eating. She was very slow to uh, start eating after she laid. Um, she took a month, a month and a half before she started eating. Uh, she is in shed now so she's very uh, lacklustre and dull. Uh, but you can see that whilst she is eating now, and she has regained some of her body condition, um, so I'm not too worried at all about the health of this snake, but you can see that she is still um, not in condition to, uh, to, to breed. So this girl is going to get the year off this year. Um, like I said, she was very slow at getting going again, uh, eating again once uh, she laid her eggs this season. Uh, so time to give her a rest. She'll be one that I will not be breeding uh, this year for, for those reasons. Uh, and it's a good um, reminder guys that your preparation for the breeding season starts with your females as soon as they come off the eggs the previous season. If you were going to breed these girls uh, you need to get food into them, they need to recover and then monitor them and see when, when they start to uh, build follicles again. The indications that they are building follicles, uh, they start to get some decent girth on them, they start to uh, bowl hug. Uh, again, these tubs have no heat mats so they don't migrate off the hot spot when they uh, start to uh, cool. They use the ceramic water bowls here, uh, which have water evaporating in them which keeps them a few degrees cooler than the ambient in the room so the, my snakes do bowl wrap a great deal in order to cool off those couple of degrees that they need to build follicles and this girl hasn't been doing that she hasn't been eating particularly well although she's been eating enough uh, to maintain her condition so this girl is going to get the year off she has bred the previous two seasons she laid in uh, May of last year and May the year before so she has given me two clutches um, she hasn't gone back on food in the way that the other snakes have um, she is in good health I've got no uh, no worries about her health but she's gonna get the year off this is an example of a snake that um, uh, just is not uh, building you can see that she's still uh, not building the girth that you need in your females to uh, to think about breeding them so this girl's getting the year off and the only other one of my female ball pythons that has made the transition successfully to these larger tubs is this enormous Cinnamon Mojave girl or Savannah uh, again she laid eggs for me in uh, July August August of uh, last season uh, so she has a long way to go but you can see that um, she's eating really really well and you can see she's put back on all of that body condition she is hugely thick and fat you can see the girth in her body here huge body weight she is eating really well if we look at the tail end you can see that the tail is uh, really thick she's got some good size and fat reserves all the way down her body um, so this female while she uh, did breed in August of last year uh, she will go again this year and again because she's eating so well and put on such good body condition uh, again she's been cooling and eating really well showing all the signs of a female that's interested so she is being bred she is locking up regularly with the uh, with the male so even though this girl bred in August of last year you can already see that she's putting back all her size and condition she's eating really really well very enthusiastic about food and she's put back all of that condition and then some uh, this girl weighs well over three kilos now and I expect she's gonna put on at least another 500 grams in the next few months as she uh, builds those follicles so that's another example of what I'm looking for in a snake that I'm breeding this season you want this sort of thickness, this sort of body condition in your females in order to consider breeding them. Okay, here's one for all you first time breeders out there who are anxious to know when is the right time to pair up a female snake. Uh, this snake is approaching its third wet season. 
Uh, many of my females are up to size at this stage and I'm very very anxious to uh, to breed this clown girl this is my pastel enchi female uh, I'm going to be breeding her to a fire clown male one of my most anticipated pairings and I was hoping to be able to do it this year unfortunately she's not ready she's sitting at around 1200 grams and you can see that she is still quite a uh, small snake so although she's reached the right age she doesn't have the size girth or condition that she needs to breed uh, she has unfortunately over the past few months become a rather picky eater uh, so she's not gaining weight either uh, to uh, breed her later on in the season so uh, we will not be breeding her this year she simply isn't ready and it's a huge disappointment to me uh, again for you first time breeders who uh, only have maybe one or two snakes and you're really looking forward to pairing them up uh, trust me um, I feel the same way even though I have a number of other pairings this year uh, this is one of my most anticipated pairings ever and she's just not ready what are the risks of pushing this girl and trying to breed her as is? Uh, very often when you introduce a male, um, it does stimulate the female to uh, start to grow follicles and sometimes the females will start to uh, eat ravenously uh, and you can actually stimulate them to go from a picky eater to a enthusiastic eater. Um, but what are the risks with this girl? She is quite small. Uh, she might just make the 1500 gram mark if I push her. Um, the main risk is that she actually goes on to lay eggs. Um, if she does, she'll lose about a kilo in weight uh, from the time she goes off food to the time she lays eggs. And she'll be in such poor condition when she's laid eggs uh, that she'll probably not lay eggs again for another one or two years. It will put my projects back um, by one or two years if I attempt to push her. So the main risk is that you are actually successful and that it puts you back for successive years. So unfortunately for me, even though this female is a beautiful female and I can't wait to breed her, uh, she's going to have to wait another year. Okay guys, um, so that's the first half of the, the breeding season, uh, that runs up to about April, so still a number of months to go yet. Um, so we've gone basically from the time that you first start pairing your snakes to the time that your females go off food. Part two will cover the time from your females going off food through the glow phase, uh, when we're still pairing up our snakes, into ovulation and then eventually to uh, prelay shed and to egg laying so that will be part two stay tuned for that and we'll also run through all the visual cues and things that i look for in my snakes during that period so five signs to look for uh, he says looking at his cheat sheet here five signs to look for that tell you that your female is in this building phase uh, during the wet season here uh, for us um, the first thing that I look for is cool seeking and in my case it's water bowl hugging. I don't have any heat mats so the females can't move away from the, the heat mat. There is no temperature gradient but evaporation from their water tubs, ceramic water tubs, uh, mean that the water tubs are a couple of degrees cooler than the rest of the, uh, the tub and they do tend to uh, start bowl wrapping. Remember also that at this time of year, my uh, ambient temperatures have dropped by a couple of degrees and I actually help that along with a little bit of air conditioning in my snake room to hold the temperatures at 28 degrees. It's only a couple of degrees centigrade drop, but that's enough for the snakes not to have to exhibit uh, bowl hugging behavior too much. Uh, they still do it. But you'll see on the, uh, the chart here that as we move out of the wet season and ambient temperatures outside start to warm up, we'll see the females actually start to uh, bowl hug a little bit more. As the temperature in the snake room rises to uh, 30 or even higher during the day, we will see our snakes uh, bowl hugging a bit more. So bear that in mind uh, when you uh, look for this visual cue with your snakes. Um, 
Your snakes will go through a phase of eating ravenously. The females uh, will start to build follicles. It takes a lot of fat reserves and we've looked at snakes to, uh, to see what they, they need to look like and the sort of body condition uh, that they, they need in order to breed. Remember that when they stop eating uh, to the time that they lay eggs and get back on to food it is going to be 100 days plus. If you maternally incubate, you can add 60 days to that. So in some cases, the snakes are gonna to have to go for 150 or more days without food. They need to have sufficient fat reserves in order to sustain them through that period. And you will find that during this building phase, they go through a period where they're eating ferociously. Um, my snakes uh, generally have a very, very aggressive feed response uh, anyway. Um, but um, I'll show you some of the feeding responses that, that I get from my snakes. Okay guys, just a short clip to show you a feeding response uh, from my breeder females in this rack here. Uh, we've had rats in the room for 15-20 uh, minutes just to uh, get the scent. Um, but you will see uh, some very, very aggressive feeding responses here. Yeah. See she's hanging out at the front of the tub, she's all ready. That is an aggressive feed response. This one might be in the shed, I don't know. Oh no, it's there. She's there. She's in shed. This one's also in shed. Oh. Once they've got hold of it, you can put them back in the back in the tub. <laughs> <laughs> That's an aggressive piece of response. Oh, oh, There are snakes flying everywhere in the snake room. I can't hardly get the tub open. Uh, the snakes are out and at me uh, to try and get their, their food. Um, it is a very noticeable change in behavior. They do become extremely aggressive with food and they want more food. Um, at this stage, if the females are still hungry after receiving one meal, I will feed them either midweek or give them a, a, a second smaller rat just to uh, satisfy their hunger. Uh, take advantage of this ravenous eating period to get your snakes into condition and to get those fat reserves onto them. Um, third thing to look out for is my snakes will hang out at the front of the tub. There is no temperature gradient so they have no reason to move away from uh, the uh, the heat source at the back of the tub because there isn't one but the back of the tub is generally the safest and most secure place for the snake to be when you open the tub the back of the tub is still hidden inside the rack and the, my snakes normally hang out at the back of the tub it's just the, the, the most secure place for them to be so it's noticeable during this build, building phase when they hang out at the front of the tub they don't normally do that but when I come in in the morning and do my morning checks uh, and the snakes are at the front of the tub, they're alert, um, they're looking for food, um, which is a noticeable change in behavior during this phase of them building follicles. 
the fourth thing to look out for is when you do pair the females, uh, they will lock willingly with the males. They're receptive, they're ready to go, and they will lock far more easily with the males if they are ready to breed and they're building follicles. So that's something else to watch for. Uh, if your females are a little bit reluctant to, uh, to, to lock, there are techniques that you can use. Uh, we'll cover those in the second video. Um, but generally speaking, when the females are ready, they're ready, and they will lock with the males when they're ready. So uh, persevere, don't push them, wait for all the, uh, the right signs, put the males in and they will lock. Uh, the fifth thing to notice in your snakes is a noticeable increase in the, uh, the girth and thickness of the females. They do put weight on, uh, they start to look quite chunky. Look for the rear third of the snake, particularly the tail end. Uh, normally the, uh, the snakes have a nice taper down to the tail but as the females start to put weight on uh, you'll notice that um, they get a slight bulge at the rear of the, uh, the, the tail. That shows that they are building and they are uh, putting on the necessary fat reserves that they will need for the breeding season. This can also be accompanied by a noticeable change in the brightness and colour of the snake. This is not the glow phase which we'll talk about in stage two where the uh, females go through a, uh, a hormonal change that gives them a really bright glow but you will see a noticeable increase in the condition of the snakes uh, and you'll you'll open the tubs and you'll think wow she's uh, she's looking really good she's looking bright she's looking healthy her eyes are shiny uh, she just looks good uh, and that is another uh, very subtle sign that your snakes are actually starting to build follicles so I hope that all makes sense guys, uh, look out for part two when we'll go through the second phase which is uh, after your second visual cue that your snakes are actually going on to, uh, to breed which is when they go off food, uh, that's around about the 25 millimeter follicle stage. Uh, they still have a couple of months to go at that stage before they will actually lay eggs. We'll cover that in stage two so ch stay tuned. Uh, something else that we'll be doing guys is a, uh, a new logo. Uh, I'll be producing t-shirts and stickers. Uh, this channel is becoming a, a lot more popular than I ever thought it would and I'm starting to uh, accumulate some IOUs in terms of uh, t-shirts and stickers so we'll be doing that. Stay tuned for that so there'll be a new logo, there'll be t-shirts and there'll be stickers and um, 500 subscribers is not very far away so I'll be doing a 500 subscriber giveaway. Uh, for you guys that are abroad that will be uh, t-shirt and stickers. Um, for guys in Malaysia uh, and I know there are many Malaysian viewers here uh, please don't forget to subscribe because only subscribers will be eligible for this but there will be two potential giveaways 500 subscribers there'll be a Malaysian subscriber and there'll be a, an international subscriber so uh, again stay tuned for that uh, you guys that haven't subscribed please go ahead and subscribe so that you're eligible for that and I'll send you a t-shirt and a sticker if you win thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time